Hi, welcome to Geometry. We would like to start with the essentials of geometry so that we can build on the big idea of being able to describe geometric figures. We have to begin by having a clear understanding of points, lines, and planes, which are considered to be undefined. We simply will give some descriptions for these, and we will use points, lines, and planes to define other vocabulary terms that we will be using throughout the course. So let's begin. Let's talk about a point. All right, A point has no dimension and no width. So points A and B that are listed are actually much larger than what a simple point would be. There are, there are other points contained within that point. So we need to be able to represent everything in geometry. And when we do that, we need to give a visual. So we will use um, a dot to represent a point. And in order to label it, we use one capital letter. So you can see here um, we have point A as well as point B listed. Please feel free to pause this video at any time so that you can take notes at the pace with which you can write. Okay, next we have a line. And a line has one dimension, it contains an infinite number of points, and extends infinitely in both directions. So our line contains the two points D and F. Okay, the arrows on the ends are showing us that we have a line and that they extend infinitely in both directions. Because it extends infinitely in both directions, lines have no endpoints. Now, when we want to be able to label a line, we have two options. Option one is to use one lowercase letter. So here we have a lowercase t, and we could say that this is line t. But in addition, we could use two capital letters with a line symbol written above them. So two points that would be on this line, which is where we get our capital letters from, would be line df. Notice the symbol above it looks exactly like a line. We could also say line FD. Okay, so we have our one lowercase letter that would be T, and then we have our other option of two capital letters with a line symbol. Now, if there, we know there's an infinite number of points on that line, so we could use other points in order to label this line. So if we locate a point and we call it J, we can now call this line DJ. Or we could call this line JF. And again, either of these last two options, we could reorder those points. Um, and the line is still referring to the same one at the top of your screen. Next, we have a plane. And when we talk about a plane, we need to know we have two dimensions now. There's no thickness to a line. Planes do not have edges, despite the illustration that's at the top of your screen. That is simply a visual for us to follow. So we draw something in that looks like a quadrilateral, but you need to remember that planes don't have any edges. And it extends infinitely in all directions because it doesn't have any edges. So there are no boundaries to it to stop the direction that it's going. When we want to label a plane, we do have two options. So one option is to name three non-collinear points. So points that are not in a line. And that's very important that you understand that the points are not in a line. And we'll, we'll refer to that a little bit more in class and clarify as to why that would be important to know. So an example of three non-collinear points uh, would be plane A, B, C. So we do three capital letters, we put them side by side, and again, we make sure that they 
um, do not contain one line. Next, we could use one capital letter that's not a point. So if we take notice to the capital M that's in the upper right hand corner of that plane, that doesn't have a dot next to it. Therefore, that is not a point and we could call that plane M. So you should be able to think to yourself, well, there was a couple ways to name a line. There must be a couple ways to name the same plane. So perhaps you saw this plane as ADC instead of ABC. And we could reorder those letters and we could say CAD. So it doesn't matter the order of the letters as long as that there is not one line that contains all three of those points. So it's nice in geometry not only to have an example, but it helps to have a non-example. So we would not, again I'm going to emphasize, we would not want to name this plane B, D, C. All right, when we look at plane B, D, C, so I can make a line here, that plane that line, excuse me, that line contains an infinite number of planes. There's a plane that will cut right into your computer screen that captures those points. So, and that will be a little bit easier to represent when you come into class tomorrow. All right, let's move on. Collinear points. Well, we just said what non-collinear are. So, collinear are points that are together on a line. And you see co meaning together and you see the word line. So together on a line. So if we have line, we need arrows. We have line N and perhaps we have points A, D, and M. A, D, and M are collinear. We simply would write an A, comma, a D, comma, and M to indicate those points are collinear. It's nice to have a non-example. We did just see one, but we can look at another one. So this would be J, E, and N are considered non-collinear. Well, if points can be collinear, Points could also be coplanar as well as lines being coplanar. So when we say things are coplanar, we say that two objects are on the same plane. So again, emphasizing the vocabulary, co, and then representing planar would, would be your plane. So an example of things that are coplanar, again, planes don't have any edges, but we need a way to represent them. Points A, B, and C are all together on the plane. In addition to that, lines A, C, and B, C are coplanar. Both lines are on that plane, but not on a plane, not together on a plane. We could have point C, R, N. And over here, we could have point S. So those points are non-coplanar. We could have a line in here. And we could have a line that's going to run parallel underneath it. And that would be non-coplanar. So the question arises, can planes be coplanar? And the answer to that question is that they can be coplanar. So if we look here, the yellow represents plane P. And within plane P, there is plane A, B, C, D. And there is plane P, Q, R, S. Please notice I'm starting at a vertex and I am going around. So right now, I have two planes that are coplanar. And if I were to move this over, I no longer have coplanar planes. I could take this blue rectangle that's here and I could 
intersect these two planes. They're not coplanar, however they are intersecting. And the next video is going to give you some postulates that have to do with intersections, so um, parts of objects that are shared. All right, next we have a segment, and a segment is part of a line. Okay, and it has two endpoints. So part of a line with two endpoints, noting the arrows on the ends change to actual points. And when we want to label the segment, it's very similar to a line, except we're using the two endpoints. And the symbol above it looks exactly like a segment. Again, we can interchange the endpoints, but you always pick the two endpoints and always using capital letters because, again, points are um, represented by capital letters. Um, another term that we want to use are undefined terms to define would be a ray. An array has one endpoint and extends infinitely in one direction. So the endpoint would be R and it extends infinitely to the right in the direction of Y, yet never stopping at Y, which is why there is an arrow. Okay, that it means that it, it extends infinitely. So it's important that when we um, write down what we see as a ray, we have the endpoint, and then we pick a letter that's in the direction in which the ray extends. So our notation above, you want to have the arrow over the point that shows the direction with which we're running. So the R is the endpoint, the arrow will not go over the R. So ray RY, I'm sorry, and ray RA are both the same ray. Okay, there's two different ways to name that ray. We never want to write ray AR or YR. And that is because R is the endpoint. When we talk about rays, we can have two rays that lie on the same line and have the same endpoint. In other words, ray BC and ray BA are considered opposite rays. All right, so line M contains a pair of opposite rays. So if I ask you to draw a pair of opposite rays, you could simply draw a line, give me three collinear points, look at the notation for the ray, identify who the endpoint is, and that would be B, and that goes in the middle. Okay, that's a good question to be able to answer in the future. Okay, really quickly here, we're going to take a look at two diagrams, and you want to be able to ask yourself if you could answer these questions so um, we can talk about them in class. So can you give two other names for line WQ? You want to pause and answer that. The next question is, can you give another name for plane V? Third, can you name three points that are collinear, then name a fourth point? that is not collinear with those three. And your fourth question is, name a point that is not coplanar with R, S, and T. So again, you want to have the answers to those questions written down when you come into class. I look forward to seeing you.